When it comes to the movie The Shining, Jessica and I have a bit of an obsession with the movie. And that's what brings us all the way out here to Yosemite National Park for today's Grim Adventure. It's a beautiful place. It's our first time here. You excited? Yosemite National Park is one of those places where you see pictures of it and it's absolutely beautiful and breathtaking. All these trees that you're looking at right now are actually burned. They have this like ghostly white top to them, but you look at the bases, it's all dark. So even though they're not green, they are kind of kind of spooky and beautiful, right? Perfect for a Grim Life Collective shining video. Technically, this trip to Yosemite National Park is part of my birthday. It was one of Jessica's birthday presents to me. You see, I've always wanted to stay at a very interesting hotel that's here inside the park that has a connection to The Shining. We're spending the night, we're taking you with us, and once the sun goes down and the shadows start coming out, we're gonna roam the halls of this hotel. It's rumored, or so the story goes, that when Stanley Kubrick, the director of The Shining, was scouting locations for how he wanted his nightmarish Overlook Hotel to look, he used this hotel as the inspiration, almost to the fact, almost to the point that it's almost identical. You'll see what I mean, especially when we come to the blood elevators. Yosemite National Park lies west of the coastline of the Sierra Nevada Mountains in Middle Eastern California. The Yosemite Valley is a magnificent gorge about seven miles long and averaging a mile in width. The Merced River toiled for about 60 million years to cut a canyon 2,000 feet deep. Then mighty glaciers ground and gouged for another million years to add more than 1,000 feet to its depth. Just look at that. Now that is majestic, beautiful, and larger than life. I, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that you guys get a, a sense of how massive this is just standing here looking at this, but I really don't think a camera could do it justice. And if I zoom in to right about here, you get a better look at that waterfall. Wow. And of course, we got to do the touristy thing and get a shot of us standing right here. How's this? Look good? Say cheese. Swiss cheese. It is 100 degrees out here at Yosemite, and you can see Jessica has her fan to help her keep cool. But I got a surprise for you, baby ghoul. We're going inside a tunnel. There's a secret area here that not many people know about. It's gonna be cooler in there. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yes. So the main viewing area is off to the left, and on the other side of the parking lot is where you'll find the entrance to the main tunnel, the tunnel that you drive through and we have to go inside and walk to almost the middle. Yeah, there's nobody over here. It's nice that there's a sidewalk here. It's a very small sidewalk, but it gets us to where we're going. I got gotcha. you. Now, don't get me wrong, it is absolutely beautiful back there with that overlook, but 100 degree weather coming here inside the tunnel for what we're about to show you, it's perfect. Now, baby goal, we don't have that much further to go. Right now, we're in the well-lit area, but once it starts getting dark, we gotta look on the right-hand side for the entranceway. It's, a, it's an emergency tunnel, all right? It 
took a while to get here and it's really loud, but we finally found it. Oh, this is creepy. This is definitely a fun way to start off the Shining video. Now, I'm probably gonna keep this going the entire walk back there because, well, why the heck not? <laughs> Baby girl, this is cool, right? Right? So right now we're about in the middle of the mountain. <laughs> so we found this out because of TikTok. We saw it pop up on different places that you may not know in California, especially whenever it comes to Yosemite. And we knew that we were coming up here to stay at this hotel. And uh, we just had to, we had to visit it. A little bit of water in here. It's getting a little muddy. Not too bad though. All right. So we have reached the end. It's a lot quieter down here, that's for sure. And they have this gate because so many people come down here. And for a while, I was seeing a couple different pictures and video of people going on the other side. So somebody broke the gate, so it's nice to see that they fixed it because the last thing that we want is to have somebody walking back here than going over the edge, right? So if this gate wasn't here, we could walk out there and get a really cool view of the, the waterfall and what we were showing you earlier, but that is not happening. But still, I mean, this is pretty freaking wild. Let's turn around and look at this. That's where we came from, this giant hole in Yosemite. You can see the cars moving down there. Oh, the rumble. Oh, that's, that's a, uh, could feel that in your bones. In a way, I kind of feel like we're in Yosemite jail. <laughs> we can't get through. Everything's got locks, which is perfectly fine. We can go up to the, let's look through here. That is one heck of a ledge. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Real quickly, before we head over to the hotel, there is another emergency tunnel that not many people, many people know about. It's a smaller tunnel, but you can actually make it through the gate this time. They really do feel like portals to hell. Now Jessica's already over here on the other side of the fence. Look at that. Now that is magnificent. What a view, right? Now we're not gonna get too close to the edge because some of the rocks are wet. And if you do come out here and you wanna do something like this, please be careful. And never hike alone, never hike alone. It truly is something else, right? And if you look closely down at the bottom of your screen, that's an actual road with cars and people walking on it. One step forward, we're gone. Well, it looks like if we did fall over, at least we'd hit a ledge first. That might stop us, but there's a very good chance you'd be going all the way down. And with that, we begin our journey back through the tunnel to the main tunnel, then to the hotel. <laughs> I 
it kind of feels like we're walking into hell. The red color at the very end. Now I'm sure you can tell that right now filming this, it is nighttime. And that is because it is almost midnight here at Yosemite National Park. And right now, Jessica and I are standing at the entrance to the Awani Hotel, which has a very special place in the hearts of those who love the movie, The Shining, even those who are obsessed with it. Now you see this creepy, spooky, haunting hallway that's behind us? This is where we're gonna start our journey into the Overlook Hotel. Again, I feel like I should point out that this is not a filming location video for the movie The Shining. Even though parts of the hotel that we're about to show you look like the interiors for the Overlook Hotel. Now, there's a reason for this. When Stanley Kubrick was making The Shining, whenever he was designing the Overlook Hotel, he sent photographers out to different buildings across the world and they took pictures back to Stanley Kubrick and he sat there and he basically built his hotel from these pictures. This hotel here in Yosemite National Park in California is going to blow your mind because once we get inside these doors at the end of this hallway, it's like you just stepped into the shining. The reason we were starting this video off this close to midnight is because this place is super busy right now. It is mid-July, it's high tourist season, and the entire day that we've been here, there have been people all over the place. We toured the grounds, we toured Yosemite, we checked into our room, and we decided to wait until midnight because, well, there's nobody else around except for us. And you gotta admit, it's extra spooky, right? So let's start off by walking through the Overlook Hotel's lobby. Right now, Jessica is walking the same exact pathway that Jack would have been walking in The Shining. And everything looks, well, almost identical to Kubrick's hotel. He changed just enough details to make it his own. But the pillars, the walls, the lights, the markings on the floor, all look the same. Now, there's a couple big differences. For instance, when Jack stops over at the front desk, right over where Jessica is, and says that he has an appointment with Mr. Ullman, the desk is actually not here. Everything's been switched, flipped around. Let me show you what I mean. Hi, I've got an appointment with Mr. Ullman. My name's Jack Torrance. The real front desk is actually on the other side of the room, and kind of like a mirrored image. You can see it right there. It looks pretty close to The Shining, doesn't it? How fun is this? Actually walking through the Overlook Hotel. Even though they didn't film any part of The Shining here, it kind of feels like you're in the Overlook Hotel, doesn't it? You gotta keep in mind that they, they pieced everything together, they changed the finer details, and they kind of mirrored and flipped everything. But if you pay close attention to this scene, you can see these little, little details right there. You see how there's like six toppings right here? But in this scene, whenever Jack is talking to the front desk clerk, there's four of them. How neat is that? Now, in this scene, the, the front desk clerk tells Jack that Mr. Ullman's office is the first door on the left, which puts it right over here. Now, there's an actual room here. It's the sweet shop. It's a little bit of a gift shop. You can see the entrance right there, but in the movie, when Jack walks down the hallway... Now, if you're watching this video, hopefully you're getting the feeling that you're walking through the Overlook Hotel in the movie The Shining. 
we are. And we've been here all day and we kind of feel like we're part of the movie now. We're ghosts inside the hotel. Now, before we move on to show you the other places that they chose from for inspiration, I want to point out this room right here, the gold room. As Jack Torrance is walking through the hotel lobby, you can see the gold room looming in the distance. And in real life, it's actually the hotel bar. Now, when we get closer to the door here, there'd be a little sign just to the right of it that said the gold room. And it's closed right now. We actually had dinner earlier in here. But this is what, I don't know if the gold room was based off of this. But in real life, you can see where the inspiration came from. I mean, it's here. It's definitely eerie being inside this hotel at night with nobody else in here. We're just kind of walking through, pointing out the most obvious places. And I'm sure if we wanted to, we could probably pick this place apart. All right, on to the next big location, even bigger than the hotel lobby. Now consider this a bit of a tease because what you're looking at right now are the red elevators, or as I like to call them, the blood elevators. And if you're a fan of The Shining, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But before we get into that, we're gonna talk about the Colorado Lounge. In this scene, the characters come out of that elevator right there, which is actually the maintenance elevator. And the room's a little bit different. Remember, they kind of pieced this entire hotel together based off of this hotel. They come out that elevator, they walk right in front of these stairs. Pay attention to the stonework right there, the design, the angles of it. This is our Colorado lounge. Oh, it's beautiful. My God. As they walk into the Colorado lounge, they start finding out about the history of the place, some of the artwork and some of the famous people that have stayed here. Now, wait until you get a load of this. It is real, 100% real, down to the windows and the stained glass on the top. The camera would have moved almost just like this, all the way across the room. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this before. Are all these Indian designs authentic? Yeah, I believe uh, they're based mainly on Navajo. And now they have this area blocked off, so we can't get back there. But they actually walk past those giant pillars and right against the back wall, there's a giant fireplace. Now, remember, <laughs> I told you Stanley Kubrick picked pieces of everything and he built his perfect hotel. This, the, the fireplace is not over there. We just passed it. Did you see it? This fireplace is massive. There's Jessica. Look how big it is. I mean, she's practically climbing inside of it. But the giant wooden beam on the top that she's touching right now to the stonework, everything matches up. It's almost as if Kubrick actually took the fireplace and piece by piece put it on his set. How crazy is this? We had uh, four presidents who stayed here. I love that we have the entire Overlook Hotel to ourselves. This is a, a shining fan's dream come true or nightmare. And speaking of famous people who stayed here, the hotel actually gave us these printouts. It talks a little bit about the history of why and how Kubrick chose this place as well as other places for the inspiration for the Overlook Hotel. And then, this one here it talks about famous Awani guests, all kinds of different people, including a man by the name of Jared Leto, which we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on. We're actually staying in a room that he likes to stay in whenever he's here visiting. 
because of the dining area behind me, we can't get any further back than where we are right now. But standing right here, looking at this room from right here, you can picture Jack Torrance sitting at his typewriter, typing away, clickety-clack, clickety-clack, clickety-clack. Come on, you can't tell me this is not cool. No wonder Cooper chose this place. Watching this movie and picking apart the scene, it's kind of dizzying watching how they kind of pieced the Overlook Hotel and The Shining together. But standing here, I can only think of one thing. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Or shall I say grim? All work and no play makes grim a dull boy. Now this is gonna make your head spin. Imagine little Danny riding his big wheel through the halls of the Overlook. Something like this. Now, in the scene where he's riding through the kitchen, it's not here on property, of course. They actually built that on the soundstage, but it's not modeled after anything like this. But when he gets over here to the Colorado room, he rides his big wheel along this route right here. And we know that he turns this corner because you can see the windows. He's really close to them. And he rides into the Colorado room just like this. And yet, here's another tease of the blood elevators. Or as we call them, the murder elevators. Once we go inside, yes, we're going to take you inside and show you why we call them the murder elevators. There's no blood in there, but in this scene, you're gonna see these elevators. Jack is walking through the halls and he hears music and he stops and he looks right down this hallway right here and there's balloons, it's party favors. The gold ballroom is at the far end. And then you see those pillars, the columns. In the movie, they're painted red. Here, they're white. Now, here's the shot. You see the elevators, and then you see those two cutouts right there? Check this out, I'm gonna back up. This blows my mind. There's one right there, and then there's the other one. Kubrick really pieced the Shining Hotel together based off of this place. Every little detail. All right, enough is enough, enough teasing. Here are the blood elevators. No, we do not have any prop blood coming down or anything like that, no special effects, but just looking at them, if you know the movie, you know exactly what happens here. A bloodbath. The doors, the designs, everything, the color red, it's all here, 100%. All right, baby girl, what were you just telling me? You said somebody's here with us. What were you, what are you talking about? Tony would like us to go into the elevators. Isn't that right, Tony? Yes, go into the blood elevators. Do the roar. <laughs> Wrong movie, but still fun. After you. Red rum, red rum, so red I, rum. I say we go to floor number two. Two? Number two. I gotta show you this. There's stained glass up here on the roof. Alright. So this is floor two. I'm just gonna say if you know, you know. We're gonna be quiet because it is about 1.30 in the morning. And there are people asleep here. So this is the second floor. Like I said, if you know, you know. And let me just say this ahead of time, they do not have that room number here. We checked, it's not here. But I do wanna point this out. Pay close attention to the pattern of the rug on the floor. 
It's not your average pattern. It's not the one from The Shining, but it's definitely not your normal pattern that you find at a hotel. Hello, Danny. Come and play with us. <laughs> so quiet and that is pretty much it when it comes to our shining video here at Awani Hotel at Yosemite National Park when it comes to actual like shining locations but there is one other thing that we want to show you and that is our hotel room it's up on the third floor we actually this place books out quite a bit in advance so we had to pay you're not gonna believe this Think of it, it's, it's a birthday gift for one night in the third floor suite, which is what we're about to show you. It was $1,300 plus tax. Now keep in mind, you're in the middle of this beautiful national park surrounded by mountains and you got the shining, but it hurt. It really hurt, but it's worth it. All right, let's go up to the third floor. One of my favorite things here is that they give you actual keys and they're styled like old keys. They may be similar to the originals, I'm not sure, but they're pretty cool. Hold it up, let's see it closer. Right. There we go. Do you see, see you. how much it bounces? That's so wild. So just like the second floor, the third floor is us. And the third floor suite is at the far end. even have teeny tiny mouse doors. <laughs> now there's six floors to this hotel and we walked all the floors. We walked all the, uh, the staircases, talked to housekeeping to see if there's anything that matches, anything that looks, anything like the movie. And all of it seems to be on the first floor. So this is us, 332 and 334. This room is actually called the third floor suite. That's its official name. Welcome to the Grim Cribs. <laughs> so it's two main rooms. We have a funny story about this place. So Jessica's gonna go ahead and walk right here into the main living room. It is massive, and excuse our mess. We've been here all day. It's been 100 degrees outside, so we've been kind of living inside when we were done. The nice air conditioning. Right? It is very ice cold here, which is nice. So it's this main room, it, these windows behind all the curtains, they, they open up and we have this panoramic view of the mountains. So it's dark out right now, of course. So here is a couple of different pictures that I took earlier outside the windows of the mountains. But here's a little fun thing about this. You ready for it? As soon as we checked in, one of the very first things we did, we went down to the snack bar, Mr. Ullman's office, and, and bought some drinks, some caffeine, some water because it was hot. And the lady who checked us out, she recognized our room number because we charged it to her room. And she said, oh, that's Jared Leto's favorite room. And we're like, excuse us? And she's like, yeah, every time he comes here, he stays in that hotel room because he likes it, probably because of the view and it's massive. And uh, she says, but every time he's here, he always complains about the Wi-Fi, how bad it sucks. And he's not wrong. The entire time that we've been at this hotel, we've been cut off completely from the world. It's really bad. Right? I don't know if it's our service. We have AT&T. Uh, you might have better luck if you're Verizon or, or who are the other ones? T-Mobile. T-Mobile. But AT&T out here, you're dead to the world. Nothing. The Wi-Fi here, horrible. But Doesn't work for me. I haven't had uh, any reception at all. Can't even load my pictures. She's over there. Hi. <laughs> so <laughs> we're staying in a place where Jared Leto likes to kick it, you know, put his feet up and watch some TV. You guys want to see the bedroom? And then there's the bathroom. We have a little skit planned for you guys if you made it this far. You ready? <laughs> all right. So leaving the main room here, back to the hallway. 
this I is. I want to take a time to point out that the lettering on the doors here are beautiful and vintage, just like in The Shining. Right, like an Art Deco? Yeah. So technically, I guess this used to be two estate rooms, or state rooms, however you want to say that. This is technically 334. It's just the one bed and the living room. Oh, man. And the bathroom isn't that big. I feel like the bathroom was bigger at the Thornwood Castle, but still, it's kind of cool. The Rosewood Castle? Yeah. It was, but it was not attached to your room. It was its own separate room that you had to go to down the hall. Now, of course, this bathroom looks absolutely nothing like the bathroom from The Shining, and it's a lot smaller. But as soon as we turn on the light, this is what we were greeted with. Well, not somebody behind the curtain, but a curtain just like that. Yeah. Do you mind? <laughs> Do the roar! Red rum. Now this is a view. We've got the field and the mountains and the sun coming down in the background, and there's Jessica just kind of relaxing, taking in the morning. I'm enjoying the mountains. Now, baby girl, we survived a night at the Overlook Hotel. Barely. Right? Just barely. We were up way past our bedtime. We basically watched the movie The Shining in the lobby of the Overlook Hotel and the Colorado room. It is true. I even took a nap in the lobby. Did you ever think that that would be possible? No. I thought coming here, you know, inspiration for filming location, sure. I thought it would be one small thing. I didn't think it would be that much. The more that we dove into it, the more we found. Yeah. Like little nooks and crannies everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. You really are in the Overlook Hotel. We really wanted to wait until the next morning to give us time to reflect, to kind of sleep on our experience here at the Awani Hotel or the Overlook Hotel. What did you think of this place? I thought I was going to die in the elevator. <laughs> and why is that? It, uh, it's not a sharp stop like you're used to in most elevators. It's an old elevator, so when the door opens, it's still moving. You ever been on the Tower of Terror? It's, it's the ride. It really is, without the, the sudden drop. You know, the fact that when it comes to the movie The Shining, I mean, it's no secret, all of the sets were completely built. This was not a filming location video, and all of those sets are completely gone. And you can, we kind of made it our mission to just track down as much shining locations or thoughts or theories that we possibly can. And this one was a big one for us. I mean, when we go over to England, we're going to be doing more over there. But here in the States, getting the opportunity to walk through, it's almost like an alternate universe version of the Overlook Hotel, but it's yeah. still the same, but it's slightly different. It was pretty surreal, kind of terrifying. It was awesome. Yeah. Now we can say that we watched The Shining inside The Shining Hotel. For your birthday. For my birthday. Happy birthday. So if you come out here, do it. And you know what, I'll say this. We were out here for one night, and like I said, the cost of the night for the room that we're, we were in, the, thir uh, the third, third floor, floor suite, suite, it's pretty high. $1,300 plus tax. And then it's you one got a $30 park ticket to get into the park, $30 for valet. valet, and that's not including your food. Just getting the opportunity to be on site at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, where it's completely pitch black outside, and just walk through the Overlook Hotel, worth it. I do it again. I can't wait to actually come back in a smaller room during winter when you can use all the fireplaces. Yeah. They do light them. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time from Yosemite National Park, the Overlook Hotel. Till next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I'm in love. It's coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck is that it stays. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's all.